Welcome to lecture 3.5 um, in College Algebra, Solving Equations and Inequalities with Absolute. So for today's brief pause, I have another poem from Mary Oliver that I think is very powerful um, about each of us recognizing that we have to find our own way in the world and that maybe it's the most important thing that we do is to find where we belong. Um, what our purpose is, what our passions are, and give time and energy to that. Um, this is called The Journey, and um, let me begin. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began. The, the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice. Though the whole house began to tremble, and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Men, my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough and a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Sometimes no explanation is necessary, but a little pause can be helpful. <clears throat> Today we're going to look at solving equations with absolute values and solving inequalities with absolute value. Equations with absolute value. For a greater than zero and an algebraic expression x, the absolute value of a, I'm sorry, the absolute value the absolute value of x equals a is equivalent to x equals negative a or x equals a. So for example, if x equals, let me get rid of this pointer, sorry. If x equals, if the absolute value of x equals 4, then x can be positive 4 or negative 4. Now why do we have this? Absolute value is a measure of distance, okay? Um, the actual definition is the number of units um, away from zero on the number line. So imagine you were spending a fun weekend in Austin, okay? And so you drove from Dallas to Austin, and that was about 200 miles. You hit 6th Street and hit some bands and hung out with some friends. And then at the end of the weekend, you turned around and drove back. So you drove a negative 200 miles. So you're in total amount of, of distance you've gone is zero miles, correct? Of course not, right? You know that you actually drove 400 miles. But usually when we're talking about um, distance, the sign kind of indicates a direction. And so um, since I ended up back in the same place, um, my distance from my original starting point is zero at the end or my displacement from where I started. And so that's really what absolute value is about. It's about measuring distances regardless of direction. Um, you know, you might do this with um, a diver, a scuba diver who's going down, which might be a negative amount, going down 20 feet, so he goes down negative 20 and then comes back up 10, plus 10, goes down negative 2, etc. Now you might leave the signs on them to figure out where that diver is at the end of these up and downs, but if you wanted to know how far the diver went overall, 
you would use the absolute value of each of those measures. Solve um, the absolute value of x equals 5. Well, we already saw an example like this. So um, when we have the absolute value equals a number or uh, the absolute value of an expression equals a number, what we do is we, um, once we've isolated the absolute value on one side, we can drop the absolute value notation, which are these two bars up and down, vertical bars, and simply set it equal to the positive and negative of the answer. And if inside the bars is an expression like x minus 4, we would set the expression equal to negative 5 and, and 5 in this case. And we'll see an example of that in just a second. So in this case, the solutions are negative 5 and 5. And again, the concept of the number of units from 0, we can see that both 5 and negative 5 are 5 units from 0, so this is indeed true. So let's look at one that's a little more complicated and look at the steps. Okay, the first thing we want to do is to isolate the absolute value on one side. So in this problem, we have the absolute value of a quantity minus 1 equals 4. So we're first going to add 4 to both sides. And so we get the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 5. That's the first thing we're going to do in solving these equations. Once we've isolated the absolute value on, this, on one side, then we can drop or remove the absolute value brackets and set the answer equal to positive or negative. So really what we want to do here is create two problems. So x minus 3 equals negative 5 or x minus 3 equals 5. So again, as soon as we have the absolute value equal to a, a number, um, we can drop the brackets and set it equal to the positive and negative of that number. And then we're simply going to solve. We're going to add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 2, or x equals 8. As always, it's important to check. I'm not going to walk through these checks, but you can see them by just plugging in the values, and both are true. So indeed, the solutions are negative 2 and 8. In terms of um, absolute value equations, when a equals 0, the absolute value of x equals a is equivalent to x equals 0. Because there's no 0, it doesn't have a, a sign or polarity. 0 is neither positive or negative. It's actually considered neutral. Note that for a is less than 0, the absolute value of x equals a has no solution. So this would be as if we said the absolute value of x equals negative 4. a is less than 0 means that a is negative. And we, you cannot have the absolute value of something being equal to a negative number. It can be equal to zero, it can be equal to a positive number, but not a negative number. So if indeed we did say that the absolute value of x equals negative four, the solution to that is the empty set. There is no solution, okay? When we're talking about inequalities with absolute values, um, sometimes they have them and the following properties are used to solve them. Again, for a greater than 0 and an algebraic expression of x, if we say the absolute value of x is less than a, this is equivalent to saying that x has to be between greater, or excuse me, between negative a and positive a. Okay? If you have less than, x is less than, the absolute value of x, of x is less than a constant. For example, the absolute value of x is less than 3. This is equivalent to x being greater than negative 3 and less than 3, being between negative 3 and 3. Okay? This works also for um, inequalities that are uh, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So, for example, here we would say 2x plus 3, excuse me, the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 4 is equivalent to, again, 2x plus 3 being between negative 4 and positive 4. When we have the absolute value of x is greater than or greater than or equal to um, a constant a, this is equivalent to x is less than the negative a or x is greater than the positive a. Okay, so for example, if we said um, the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 1, this is equivalent to y is less than or equal to negative 2, or y is greater than or equal to 1. 
And this kind of makes sense, right? We're saying that the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 1. Well, let's think of numbers that are less than or equal to negative 1. So, for example, negative 3, okay? Well, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, which, of course, is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, and then of course, just with this greater than or equal to one, all the values that are greater than or equal to one on the positive side are also going to work. And as I already mentioned, um, both of these statements, um, the absolute value is less than or the absolute value is greater than, holds true whether it's less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater than or equal to. So let's see how we do a problem. Solve and graph the solution set to the absolute value of 3x plus 2 is less than 5. Well, remember for less than, we have to put it between those two values, negative 5 and 5. So we have 3x plus 2 is greater than negative 5 and less than 5. Um, we could do these separately because we're really going to solve two equations uh, or two inequalities. Um, but here we can do them together. So what we're trying to do is get x by itself in the center. We want to know what x is if we're trying to solve this. So the first thing we're going to do is to um, subtract 2 from all three places, right? Negative 5 minus 2, 3x plus 2 minus 2, and 5 minus 2. And that gives us negative 7 is less than 3x, which is less than 3. Okay, so when we're solving these, you've got to remember that you've got to do, just like you do with equations, you do the same thing to both sides. Here, if we're doing um, one three-part inequality, we need to do it in all three parts. So again, we want to find out what x is, so we're going to divide each piece by 3. And we get negative 7 thirds is less than x is less than 1. So this is our solution set. X um, in set notation, we say x such that x is um, between negative 7 thirds and 1, or parenthesis in interval notation, or parenthesis negative 7 thirds, comma 1, parenthesis. Okay? And it's parentheses here because these are less than, not less than, or equal to, etc. If I'm graphing this, I'm graphing it on a number line, and we're between negative 7 thirds, which is just a little past negative 2, and 1. We use the parentheses just like we do in interval notation, or you could have an open circle on the number line. Solve and graph the solution set. The absolute value of 5 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 1. In this case, we're actually going to write these as two equations. Since we have greater than, remember that um, we need to consider values of 5 minus 2x which is less than or equal to, in this case, negative 1, or 5 minus 2x is greater than or equal to the positive version, okay? <clears throat> so notice that um, one of the things that can give you a clue is that the positive version stays the same. If it was less than, it should be less than here, and the negative version changes direction, okay? So again, here we're going to solve. We're first going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, of both sides of the inequality, and actually in both cases. So both sides of the one on the left and both sides of the one on the right. And so we get negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 6, or negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Again, we're trying to get x by itself, just like we do in all algebraic equations. So now we're going to divide both sides by negative 6 of both inequalities. And so I get x is greater than or equal to 3, or x is less than, um, or x is less than or equal to 2. Okay? Now this is not saying that x is between 2 and 3. It's less than or equal to 2, or greater than or equal to 3. So notice um, in the set um, notation we have x such that x is less than or equal to 2, or x is greater than or equal to 3. It's easier probably to see less confusing in the interval notation. If we're thinking about the number line, we're going to have parentheses, negative infinity, all the way up to 2 with a square bracket because we're including 2 because it's also equal to 2. Union, which is the or word, um, square bracket 3 because, again, it's greater than or equal to 3, comma, uh, infinity, parentheses. And here this is easy to see. So we have two pieces of the graph. You can see that in interval notation. 
four in the set notation, so I should have two separate graph situations here. Two separate graph situations here. Okay, I hope that helped you out, and if you have any questions, um, please reach out.